Hello there and welcome back to a different style of video again. I feel like I've been saying that a lot recently, but today is the first episode of Ask Moldy where I will take yours, the viewers' comments, and answer them in a video, especially there are some very important questions that have been asked recently on my channel, and I feel like it would just benefit everyone if they knew the answer to, because I understand not everyone is comfortable leaving comments on YouTube videos, so Hopefully these will not only help answer your questions about Lego, but also just get to know me a bit more, as that is really what separates this channel from anyone else's. So, not only will I be answering Lego videos, I'll probably keep the Lego videos towards the start of this video, because that is what most people want to see. But if you have any personal questions, if you're interested about anything that isn't Lego, I have a massive Funko Pop collection that some of you may not be aware of. I have showed it off in quite a few videos now. But if there are any questions, let me know in the comments section of this video. And I'll try not to make this a monthly thing. Perhaps every couple of months when there's enough questions packed up, I will do another video like this answering all your questions. And if you would like to see this monthly and I do get enough questions... Perhaps at some point it may become a regular occurrence, much like my rooms and releases at the end of the month and reviewing that set's drops right at the start. Anyway, I did screenshot all of these comments and had them prepared on my phone and then I realised that I needed my phone to record. So that didn't go as well as I planned and you might actually see I've got a light side poster preventing the ring light I use from actually reflecting back. I thought that was hilarious. So let me know. What do you think of my choice of posters down below? All these posters, even the two on here you might have seen in a few recent videos, are all from the LEGO Star Wars magazine. And especially this TIE Fighter one, I think they're pretty cool. I'm definitely going to keep these. It helps a ton with the exposure and especially the reflection behind me. Hopefully it improves your viewing experience. But the first question isn't actually a question. There was a bunch of comments specifically here by Clips Film Melbourne and by Alloy Gaming, both on my Fixing Star Wars hairpiece video, which has got a ton of good reception. So thank you so much for everyone that's watched that video. And it's to do with a hairpiece I use for Anakin. I think I took Sirius Black's hairpiece and whacked it on the Anakin minifigure to lengthen his hair. It looked a bit better than the Clone Wars wig that they gave their Clone Wars Anakin minifigure, and pretty much every other Anakin for that matter. But they both pointed out that there was a better hairpiece used for Lloyd in Ninjago. Now, I think I have one or two Lloyds, but they're both with helmets. So I don't actually have this hairpiece in the dark brown colour. But as you can see on screen, I do have this Harry Potter minifigure. And it's the exact same hairpiece, just in the black. So I took my original Anakin, swapped out the hairpieces. And I've got to say, it looks amazing. So I'm definitely keeping my eye out. Next time I place an order on Bricklink or even through Lego, I'll try and pick it up in the correct colour and that will be a fine addition to my Star Wars minifigure collection. That wasn't the only comment I got as there was a question and it was how there was only one comment. Well, there's not just one comment anymore. As I said, I think there's like 14, 15 comments and it's over a thousand views. Thank you so much for the support and at the time of recording this, we are one or two subscribers away from 850, which is crazy how fast we're getting to 1,000. But as I've said before, we're trying to hit 900 in April. And if we can hit 1,000 in May, that would be amazing. The support on this channel has been crazy. And thank you so much because it just encourages me to do more videos like this. But the next question we've got is from James on the Lego acrylic display video, which if you haven't seen, I rearranged my minifigures in there sort of teared them up and made them look like a school photo. Honestly, it's just the Star Wars figures in a display case. But the question is, what do you do to display slash store your expensive figures and keep them from cracking? I remember replying to this because I had a very, very long response. And I think I'll read it before getting into the details. So my response to James was, it's a great question that's usually on everyone's mind, but my answer's a bit underwhelming and long-winded. I tend to keep my figs clipped onto official Lego base plates, as you can see with my Lego Star Wars ones just to the side of me. And when they're on displays, marks, or even getting ready for a video, I tend to use the 3x4 display plates just so they're ready and to hand when I'm recording. Now, so far I haven't experienced any cracks on my Star Wars minifigure legs, which as far as I'm aware is true. And the only cracks I've noticed are down the right hand side of the old Clone Wars torsos which I don't know why there are no other minifigures from the time 
And I know white plastic can be a bit fragile, especially because Lego colour their plastic white and don't use an original white strain. So it does definitely weaken it down. I've seen it with 3D printing recently. The white and the sort of metallic greys are very, very weak and prone to cracking, which is why I tend to stick to some bright green colours. And I think red is actually the strongest to my knowledge. And I also pointed out that the clones that I was talking about are from a set that is over 15 years old now. But if you're worried about cracks on your figures, I recommend using the black panel pieces that come in Star Wars mechs, which are these T panel pieces, which allow you just to slide the minifigure on. There's a panel bit in the middle, which holds them on fairly securely. If you are using this and are worried about your minifigures falling off forward, I would like to add, if you add a plate in front of it, that will just stop the legs sliding forward. It wouldn't clip them down like a stud would, so they shouldn't crack. There'll be no cracking because of these pieces. And it also doesn't cover too much the feet of the minifigures, so you still get to see some of Lego's awesome printing. I did also mention you could sit your minifigures in the videos. This is more for Clone War sets, I guess, and the sort of bark speeders, even the Endor speeders from the Endor diorama. And instead of studding them down on their legs, you just clip their hands to whatever sort of steering accessories Lego have given them. Even with some of the cars, you can just clip their hands to the wheels of the new Ford Anglia for Harry Potter, and that stops the studs cracking any of the legs. Now, I have also seen that leaving a gap between the torso and the legs and not pressing them down fully does help keep them in a pristine condition because there isn't a chance of putting too much pressure and there might have been something about the black on white for the old Clone Wars clone troopers, but... As far as I'm aware, most collectors do just not press their figures down fully, and if you've not got the pressure of a minifigure trying to hold itself together, there's no reason it should be cracking. Now, I also mention on the same clones with the cracks down the side, I have replaced the arms countless times. Perhaps that is why there's a crack down the right-hand side. I definitely think it's to do with the legs, though, because none of my arms have been cracked. The left side is fine on every single one of them, so... It does make me a bit curious why it's just the right side and it's pretty much all of my old phase one clone troopers. I will however say that the 2011 or 2013, 14, I forget what year it come out now. I'm pretty sure it was the 2011 battle pack. I mistakenly put it on a community post and someone did correct me. So if you're wondering what battle pack I'm talking about, definitely check out my community tab. But the bomb squad and the green clone troopers from that set don't have the cracks on, it is just the plain phase one trooper. So I'm not quite sure why that is, but definitely if you are worried about cracking your minifigures, use the panel that comes in the mechs, use other joints like the hands to hold up your minifigures. And there's a whole range of pieces you can use to hold your minifigures up by the hands. You could probably even attach the backpack piece on the neck and then clip them to some sort of board. If you've got a Lego base plate up, there's definitely a few bricks you can use to connect them. And I also mentioned that I acquired a 1970 red classic Spaceman, and so far that figure is pretty much in perfect condition, because if we take a look at the minifigure, you can see that the head does still spin, they're not too loose, the arms are, if anything, the arms are too tight, but, there are no cracks on this minifigure whatsoever. I am just double checking that. And as you can see, the Lego is not even that secure. So I'm pretty sure this is an authentic 1970s Red Space Man. I mean, there is always a chance that it's one of the newer ones because I didn't open it from the box. But as I've said, 15 years I've been collecting figures and most of them are in pretty good condition. So hopefully that does answer that question. And if you are worried about any cracking minifigures, definitely be sure to let me know in the comments and I'll help where I can. So I did include a TLDR, too long, didn't read at the bottom, just for anyone that doesn't want to read my whole essay of a response. As long as you take care of your figures, Lego's meant to be played with. For caution, use 93095, which is the piece ID of that mech display piece, and leave a gap between the torso and legs. That's really all there is to it. I am definitely a strong believer of Lego is meant to be played with, and as long as you're moving your figures, the plastic won't set, and I suppose definitely over seasonal changes and the change of temperatures and 
dependent on how you keep your room it is room temperature most of the time in here perhaps that has something to do with it because it's not been too hot it doesn't get too cold so We'll definitely see over the summer if any of my figures crack. But that is my long-winded answer to that question. Now, James also commented on my rumours and releases for last month. And he asked, well, love the updates. Random question, how many clone troopers are in your Grand Army? So there are a total of 75 clone troopers in my army. 76 if you include this Captain Rex, which... I think it counts. So 76 clone troopers, hopefully more very, very soon. I am excited to see what other clone sets we've got coming out. Obviously, we've got the Bark Speeder, which that pops up later in this video. So stay tuned for questions about that. We've got a ton of battle packs still on the market. I'll definitely be picking them up. I've noticed that the 2024 battle pack is currently £20 in Morrison. So I am so tempted to pick up some more of that. But I think I'll wait until May 4th first. And then see if I can still pick it up for fairly cheap. Obviously, buying outside of LEGO doesn't get you the insider's point. But I'm still interested to see what else we're getting May 4th. At the time of recording this video. Now, I always say this and suddenly LEGO comes out with 10 more sets the night of editing. But for right now, there are only two Star Wars sets coming out May 4th. I think we've got a book later on in the year. And there's some gift with purchases floating around. Which... I guess we can expect something cool from Lego. But right now, we've only got the Bark Speeder Escape set and Maul's Sith Infiltrator. So I'm pretty sure there's going to be a few more Star Wars sets coming out very, very soon. Keep your eye out. And of course, stay to the end of the month to cover all of them in my latest rumours and releases. Hopefully, they don't leave any too late and announce them May 3rd. Because I think Lego definitely wants to build up some hype. I also mentioned picking up the gunship later this year and I will be doing a video going over every single clone trooper that I own and if there are a few clones later in the year I guess I'll probably revisit it but I think the gunship is the main Clone Wars set I am missing. I've got them all lined up on the side here. Hopefully that video isn't too far away because I'm looking to pick it up for May 4th and I'm so excited about everything Star Wars happening very, very soon. It's a big time for Star Wars and I just can't wait for it. I also got a comment on my video that celebrated a year of Lego on this channel. And that was when I upgraded the Vader mech to match a scene from the 2020 Vader comic line. It's an awesome mech and I really did enjoy it. But Funk asked any tips on how to up their game in terms of creating mocks. Now... Once again, there's probably a few one-liners, but I overcomplicated my answer. And first off, great question, because it is. A lot of people don't know where to start with it. Most of my mock work I did off-camera years ago, and just getting back into LEGO, it was actually a... I'm pretty sure it was a TIE Interceptor remodel of the recent TIE Fighter, a few... Well, no longer recent, it's like five years old, but it was that set that got me back into building mocks and it was actually someone else's design. But if you are looking at starting to build your own mocks, I definitely suggest starting with modifying official Lego sets and then changing what you want from that set. Perhaps there's a few sets that you want to improve the scale of and shrink it down or vice versa. You might want to make them a little bit bigger just to fit that extra character inside. So similar to the Vader mech that I actually customised in that video. All I really did was switch out an arm and two legs. Added a few pieces, customised it to make them look more like a B2 battle droid. Which honestly I think turned out amazing. And it's probably one of my most favourite custom mechs. I'm... Drawn between that and the Ahsoka one, I think that just takes the cake from the Ahsoka mech. But once you're confident in customising official LEGO sets, then you can start creating your own smaller scenes. And especially if you're going for that sort of diorama-esque. If it's ships, then I'd suggest starting at something small, like a Bark Speeder. Not only do we have a few battle packs, you can customise into a Bark Speeder yourself. But we also have an actual Bark Speeder escape set coming out soon. Not exactly great price. Well, price for piece ain't actually too bad. But you could pick up something like that, customise the bark to how you would want a bark speeder, and then start growing bigger than that. I recommend starting on no more than 10x10 10 10 studs if you're trying to do a diorama. That's what my Bad Batch Pyramid is currently. And especially if you're doing something with the two walls, you can slowly stack them, add up to the scene, 
perhaps even do four corners of the same room see how it adds up and if you're unsure what you want to be building start off with your lego room because i can guarantee it's not going to be as easy as it looks for instance there are a bunch of shelves and different display units in this room that i'm currently in and i did take quite some time building this for an ideas project a while back and i also said if you do want some inspiration on building different models with the same sets because i'm a big fan of alt builds and especially trying to take a set not only making it minifigure scale but also making it into a completely different ship i've got a video coming very very soon that i need to start working on where i'll be taking anakin's eater 2 starfighter and turning it into his delta 7b which honestly it's going to be a bit problematic with the cockpit and i might need to sprinkle a few extra pieces in but i can't wait to see what that turns out so definitely subscribe if you want to see that remodel and the creator three in one line is the perfect line for this there are so many good sets in fact I recently bought the dragon that's sitting on my fiance's desk and decided that the wings weren't quite how I wanted them. Went to my parts, which for most people is probably just a big bin of Lego. Grabbed a few pieces and improved the wings, beefed them up. And as you can see, the wings are just a bit more voluminous than they were in the Lego design. And I think it makes an amazing difference to the set and really improves how this dragon looks than having the sort of scrawny wings that it originally did. Now, as I said, there were a few questions around the quick review I did of the Bark Speeder. It was less of a review and more of the things that I would want changed. And this question comes from General Kenobi himself asking if I am aware that the set isn't meant to be a battle pack. Now, I never said the set was a battle pack, but I definitely said that the set should be a battle pack. And the reasoning behind this isn't because I think that I know more than Lego. But rather, we haven't got many battle packs recently. We got the big one at the start of 2024, which was at that 25 price range. And my problem with this set is it didn't feel like it matched that set. Sure, if you go over 10 years ago to the other Bark Speeder and Sidecar, it sort of lines up. I don't think a Flipknot Speeder adds up to a lamp that they gave us. I definitely would have loved to seen another speed up for that. But I think also you take a look at the battle pack a few years before, which was a Bark Speeder and four clones. We got Keller and Beck, we got Grogu, who I know Lego doesn't quite include as a minifigure, and we got two clones. That's the same minifigures that we would have got in an old battle pack. They could have definitely just shrunk down the speeder to minifig scale and used it as a battle pack. Of course, I know that LEGO are more focused on creating a playset, which is why a lot of their smaller vehicles are blown up. But personally, I'd have loved this to be a battle pack. Someone also pointed out in the comments, I think it was the Great Snow Blizzard. So apologies if I'm getting any of your names wrong. But they pointed out that over in Australia, the battle pack is actually much, much closer, if not near enough the same price that we could expect one of them cheaper battle packs to be. It's just America, Europe and the rest of the world that have got it at this increased price, which matches up closer to the recent battle pack than the other two we got last year. And I definitely still hold to that. I think it should have been a battle pack. I mean, I've built it out of 86 pieces and I don't think Legos necessarily has too much more detail than mine. They have a few stickers on it. There's plenty of room for stickers on my model now. Of course, I know loads of people don't like the stickers. And I think the stickers that LEGO used on the Bark Speeder definitely aren't that worth it. It reminds me of the Republic Fighter Tank when I reviewed that. And there were just some off-white stickers with some nuts and bolts on it. And I think that is true about the new Speeder. I mean, they include a one-by-one -one sticker for a little strip on the back of the Speeder. And I guess it's down to you if you put on the stickers. But... If I end up buying that set, which I don't necessarily want it, but after the video did so well, I'm tempted to pick it up and compare it in hand and see if my opinion's any different. And of course, as many people have pointed out, most people are picking it up for Keller and Beck anyway. But back to the question, it isn't supposed to be a battle pack and I am fully aware, most people in the comments are fully aware which is why two or three days later, I did a follow-up video turning it into a battle pack because I definitely think it would have made an amazing battle pack and perhaps LEGO didn't do it because it would have been too good and they knew, especially with Keller and Beck, 
And after all of the input they got from the Jedi and Clone Trooper Battle Pack, which come with Kiari Mundi and Barris Offi, who are behind me, which is why I'm pointing in that direction, they didn't get very good reception off that. So perhaps they've increased the price, added a lamp, which is the official first build of the Jedi Temple we're getting, which is not something to be missed. And also probably another reason to buy the set, so you can say you've owned the first piece of the Lego Jedi Temple. But I also mentioned in the video that I compared it to the new 2024 one. I compared it to the other battle packs because the only other sets we've got really around that price, as far as I'm aware, is Yoda Starfighter. That's a bit more expensive. I don't think there's many sets around that price. And there's definitely some cheaper ones that aren't battle packs, like the mechs. But the mechs are at that cheaper sort of micro fighter threshold. And of course, with the Stormtrooper mech, it's also in sense its own battle pack. I've seen so many people army building mechs and you could just have your own mech empire. Now, that is the last question for today's video. Once again, let me know down in the comments all of your questions, anything you want to know. Of course, I've started back up 3D printing, so there's going to be at least another video because I've recently improved my CMF minifigure display. So I don't know when that video will be coming out. It's not something I want to push out just because I've recently done my diorama display. But let me know if you'd like to see more 3D printing incorporated into the Lego on this channel. And if you do like this style of video, drop a like on the video and subscribe for more awesome Lego content. Thank you so much again for watching this video and may the bricks be with you always.